Man, I was so excited to watch D-Rod take on a Nurmagomedov family member. You know, I feel like he's earned that fight in the UFC. He just keeps getting better and better and better with every fight. You know, Dana White Contender Series seems like, you know, such a long time ago and especially a different fighter time ago. You know, that's where I really have been impressed. The Dolby fight, for example, I've watched that twice now. And I think that there's a very good case for D-Rod to win that fight. I'm really curious how that was scored. There's control time in favor of D uh, Dolby. There's powerful kicks, things like that. But D-Rod was definitely landing significant head strikes. He had he was out striking him in every round, from what I can see. And, and you know, the 29-28s was was just a very interesting choice uh, over the three rounds of that fight. But that puts him at a four and one UFC record, still very respectable, especially with how good we're seeing him grow. The syndicate MMA mixed with the 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu is just turning him into an absolute machine. You saw him in that Mike Perry fight, right? Patience, crisp striking, and honestly, man, I'm just so impressed with how good his boxing is. It's something to really marvel at. It we always complain about the looping strikes and things like that. D-Rod is a straight shooter, if you will. And I love the way those strikes land. Jab for days. I think that he's going to be able to have his way with Parsons, especially outside the first round. Big thing with Preston Parsons, man. The guy's a human bull. If you go look at all of his fights, he's never seen a third round. And his most recent fight is the only time he's seen a second round. If you look at all the highlights, I mean... The quality of opponent is significantly different. This is a thousand percent his hardest fight to date. And even his only loss, I was still kind of impressed with how well he looked because you look at the Valdir Arujo fight and even the way he lost, you know, he was able to kind of take on a vet of the sport. At the time, Arujo was 16 and seven and he even had a stint on the uh, ultimate fighter. So those are the little things, you know, first loss was even, you know, able to get out of a really bad guillotine, was able to then get mount and, you know, try a mounted guillotine of his own. But then once that was reversed and swept, once they got to their feet, it was almost instant that Valdir saw an opportunity to lock in a guillotine. And that's exactly what he did. Very fun fight. And I think that was the biggest learning experience for Preston Parsons. And then fast forward to his most recent fights, and the guy just has his way with people. Even that Jeff Peterson fight, man, that was his most recent fight where we just mentioned that he went to the second round for the first time. The work that he did in that fight, so in the first round, it was just amazing combos, was just constantly pushing forward. Seems like he has a gas tank that, you know, can last forever, but we don't actually know that yet. Second round, he actually gets put up against the fence, gets taken down, but I mean, he basically gets into an arm bar immediately and gets a submission win. So the first time he goes to a second round, not only does he get taken down, but then he does still end up locking up a submission. So for me, when I'm looking at this fight and also considering what D-Rod would look like in that situation, I got to tell Chandler, or sorry, I got to tell Preston Parsons to, to kind of cool it a little bit. I think that trying to rush in against a guy like D-Rod is going to make his life very difficult. He has to pick his shots. He's got the skill. I just, you know, experience wise, you know, perfecting your skills for the UFC level is where things need to be now. He's going to have a size disadvantage here, in my opinion. It's not by much inches, but I think this size of Dana Rodriguez is going to pose a problem here. He could probably fight at middleweight if he wanted to. And that's where I'm seeing some problems for Preston Parsons. I don't think anyone's really picking him to win per se, but the guy's got good highlight reel tape on him. And I think that in in the grand scheme of things, if this was a normal fight with a proper training camp against the guy that a newcomer of this level should be fighting, I think he's got a great chance to pull off a very fun victory and probably a finish. But welcome to reality where you're taking on D-Rod on short notice. And frankly, if this fight goes out of the first round, I just don't see D-Rod having any issues whatsoever. I think that his takedown ability just hovering just under that 80% range should help him out enough in this fight. I think that his jujitsu game should help him avoid any big submissions of any kind. And like I said, just the striking advantage here should be pretty pretty significant. We've seen how crispy can be, how well he's able to beat guys up on the feet, especially with his hands. And you know, outside of that, it's just keys to victory all over the place. And then for Preston Parsons, I think it's going to be picking the shots. Don't rush in. Try to get some leg kicks going. Diminish the power. Try to tire him out. You know, you saw a fight like Dolby, right? Even if it looked like Rodriguez won to some people, the kicks, the control time against the fence. Just neutralize the man. Neutralize the man in the most offensive positions you can muster up. And I think this fight can go your way. Now, with that said, very limited options for Preston Parsons, on paper at least, whereas D-Rod's got significant options here. And so without further ado, let's take a look at the lines. If 
D Rod is not anywhere close to a minus 300 favorite. I'd be very surprised if not close to a minus 400. He's just been flying so high. And for him to go from a, a Nurmagomedov fighter to a short notice Preston, I just think that there's no reason to believe he shouldn't be hovering between that minus 300, minus 400 range. So let's take a look. I could be wrong. Actually, you know, very favorable fight. I think that Preston Parsons is getting a lot of credit for, for his, uh, you know, recent success and how good his career has looked so far. Plus uh, 182 for Preston Parsons' opening line. And it has not moved significantly. You're getting him now at a plus 205, even plus 190 in some areas. But it looks like the top off is about plus 205, which is a little surprising to me, especially given the, the Lamos and Ruiz fight. D-Rod opens as a minus 218 favorite and is now sitting around minus 240, minus 250. In my personal opinion, I think this line can get to a minus 300, especially when some of the guys who have recently watched a lot of the UFC and don't have maybe a lot of that time to do the research or have a long standing experience with the sport. I think that those are the guys that could drive this line up even more as the fight gets closer. I do think that Preston Parsons, like I said, has, has, has some chances here to pull off that big upset. And that's why you have this line not hitting that minus 300 from the outset. But D-Rod's the real deal. And I think that his training camps are are phenomenal. You know, Syndicate right now is, is a massively growing gym in terms of names. My man, Sean Strickland, man, this guy is just going into any gym and trying to beat up anybody and everybody. And then you have the 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu game where, like I said, I just, I don't see very many ways over the course of three rounds for Preston Parsons to win this fight, especially if he starts to get tired or has any type of UFC jitters out of that first slash second round area. d Rod's just going to have his way with him after that, in my opinion. And so very fun fight to kick off, uh, well, to end off the prelims, then kick off the main card. You know, like I said, it would have been fun to watch the Nurmagomedov uh, d Rod fight, but again, this is going to be fun. And I think all of the prelims have a very good chance of being fun as hell. So enjoy them. Keep it locked. We're going to get into the main card next, but so many great fights already.